Is it possible to do some street photography in the middle of the COVID pandemic? Let's find out. My name is Rico Richardson. Welcome back to my channel. This channel is all about helping you guys edit your photos and your videos professionally, but for free. And in this episode, I'm doing a little bit different. I'm actually outside right now because someone left a comment and asked me if I wanted to do a tutorial on street photography. The issue is, is that it's raining very, very hard. So I figured I'm going to snap some photos and I'm going to sit in my car and explain to you guys about the how and what before we jump into the studio and edit this photo. So I know these angles are a little bit strange, but before we start, let me explain that street photography is actually taking photos on the streets of people, subjects, without them knowing that you're taking the image so you get a most natural look as possible. Lately, there has been a lot of issues on privacy. And that's something you have to keep in mind. The European Union has some privacy laws and the Netherlands has as well. And before you take an image online or post it online, you actually have to ask permission for that person or you need it for educational purposes or stuff like that. If you have a subject, make sure you walk up to that person and you ask, hey, I just took your picture. Are you fine with me putting it online or using it in a YouTube channel? And Usually what helps is offering them to send them the photo and to make sure they see the photo before you post it online because that can make a huge difference in if you can use the photo or not. And in this case, I went for a specific style shooting people from the back. That way you can't recognize them and I don't have to walk up to them and ask them if they were all right with me taking their photo. I don't mind doing that, but people tend to want to keep their distance right now and usually in the Netherlands people are, are, are a little bit more shall we say suspicious on people that walk around with a camera and taking their photos so this is why I made a specific theme of this video by shooting people from behind if you want to learn more about this please google Henri Cartier Bresson he was the most famous street photographer there has been or so some uh, public sources say same goes with Vivian Meyer they both had different styles and Henry had a style in which he took an image right before the action happened so I tried to take an image I'll, I'll show you guys right now I tried to take an image of someone grabbing a doorknob but I was too late because he already grabbed it and that's not how it's supposed to go I think I'm going to edit this photo of this person right here for the simple reason because it has a lot of color in a very moody day. So let's go to the studio and let's make it happen. And here we have the image that we're going to work with. I've applied a low pass filter just to blur out the license plate. So here's the image how I've taken it and I'm going to show you guys how the end result is going to look. And this is it. I've created a duplicate because I wanted to keep this edit so I don't have to redo it myself. So this is the edit after I'm done with it. So let's go to the duplicate one. You can do so by clicking this symbol and it'll automatically create a duplicate. I'm going to keep the base curve for this edit. And the first thing that we notice is that this image is very, very dark. And I don't know why it's so dark because I've shot this on a 35 to 100 millimeters f2.8 Panasonic lens. It's an awesome lens. It's very, very sharp. And I had it set to aperture priority mode because I wanted to control the depth. So I've kept it on 2.8. Probably it had to do with how lights were falling into the lens. I don't know, but either way we got to fix it. So that's the first thing we're going to do right now. So let's search for the exposure module and I could have put them in my favorites, but in this case I didn't because I just want to search it up. So you guys know how to, and if you want to know a different way to do this, you can do so by just clicking these symbols and then find the modules, or you can go to more modules and then find them in the list down below. So like I said, exposure, ex wait, I need to, I need to work on my on my typing skills exposure there you go activate it it's very very dark so i'm just going to drag this out with my mouse because that's a way to do it and you can just move this slider so whatever works for you i'm just going to use this and i want to increase the black point a little bit as well so black level correction not too much because i don't want it to 
clip too much there you go so that already made the image look a lot better than it was before and here's where the magic happens so we're going to use the color lookup table and we're going to do something which is a Rico Richardson dark table first I've never used this before but suddenly I saw I saw this image and suddenly it just dawned to me I was like I'm just going to try that and this video is sponsored by me I've got a second channel which is Gear Island please check it out I'll put a link in the description down below I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video I hope you guys like it and let's continue which is I'm just going to click this symbol and then I'm going to pick Fuji Velvia emulation and that gives me a huge color palette and here's a before and here's an after and as you can see it does not resemble anything that we're seeing right here what we're going to do right now is we're going to use the different specific colors and then change them individually and in this case I want to address all the greens in the image and I want to address all the blues in the image and I'm just going to use one instance so I'm not going to create a new instance I'm not going to duplicate it I'm not going to change anything in the blend modes I'm just going to keep everything as is except for these individual colors so I'm going to click the first one and I'm going to drag this all the way down. So I'm going to desaturate this. I'm going to do the same thing for this green one, desaturate it. Same thing for this one, desaturate it. This looks like green as well, desaturating it. I'm going to do the same thing for the blues. And just because I want to make sure that you guys pick the same colors as I do when you follow along with this tutorial, I can't really skip this part because that way you might miss a color and get a different end result. So everything that just resembles blue, just make sure that you desaturate it. I'm going to desaturate that as well. This one, this one, because I'm going to show you guys something very, very weird and funny at the same time because I have no understanding of why something is working that way now if you look at this image we still see some blue so I'm going to use this color picker because I have no clue which color this is I'm going to put it over and there you have it so here's the color that I didn't address before I'm going to desaturate that one but somehow you can't desaturate it completely when you've got it selected so just make sure that you deselect this color picker click a different color go back to this color and desaturate it completely and there you have it now we need to crop and rotate this image as a final step however here's the thing i want to show you because we just selected the individual colors and we've just desaturated them in my opinion if i go past these colors to check and see which one i've change so which one i've desaturated i expect to be able to see all of them which i've done however when you go back to the colors that you've desaturated this is the result you saw me desaturate these colors but watch i'm going to click this one and all of a sudden it's gone it's not on minus 100 it's on minus 17. if you experience the same problem or if you know that this is a bug in dark table please let me know in the comment section down below and if more of you uh, have experienced the same problem, I'm going to make a GitHub report, like a bug report. I'm going to plug in this video to show them what is happening or what is not really going on or changed or, you know, you, you get my drift, right? That it's not working the way it should. And then we'll wait and see and, and if they are going to change it and if they're going to address it in a future update. But let's crop and rotate this one and be done with it. All right, so crop and rotate and fairly easy. It's nothing spectacular. You can do whatever you want. However, in my case, I wanted to make sure that the hands of this image are like touching the sides and that this bar is over her shoulders. There you go. So that we've got this image and it's focused on her jacket. And one more thing I want to do is I want to go back to the color lookup table. And I want to change the reds a little bit and I'm going to darken them. Watch what happens to the back. 
I'm going to darken them. We're going to increase the reds a little bit. I'm going to change this one as well. I'm going to darken it a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more contrast and to make sure that it matches the moody image as well. Maybe drop it down and I'm going to increase the reds as well. There you go. And here we have the final result. Rico from the future here, something went wrong. You saw the, uh, what's it called, the jeans of the woman. They were blue again and that had to do with the fact that I showed you guys that bug. So make sure to just go through all those blue colors again, desaturate them and then you'll get the exact same end result as I'm going to show you right now. I'm just going to show you a before and after. So let's go to the orientation one and let's go to the snapshot. There you go. So here's the original image. It's a flat raw file. And then here we have the end result. And that's it. I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comment section down below. As I said before, if you experience the same bug as I do, please let me know in the comment section down below as well. And we'll work on it. If you want to see more of me, please click uh, that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that button over there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!